Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. I recently went on an incredible trip to Wisconsin and Illinois where I spent four days doing 13 home theater tours. Now I'll be sharing those home theaters here on the channel and I've already shared two of them so far. So if you haven't seen those, be sure to check those out. I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video. Well, today what I wanna talk about is the video that I uh, shared and uploaded earlier this morning the one of David's DIY home theater on a budget. I love how he described it as every man's home theater. Uh, you know, just a common dude, uh, just trying to save some money, but still get incredible performance. And so I thought I would just take a separate video each day and just share with you my thoughts because of that week, we were just going, going, going so quick, going from home to home trying to get as much content as we could, but I didn't have a chance to actually do what I'm doing now. And so now that I'm back home, I've got a little bit of time to be able to edit this. And so I just want to share with you my thoughts on David's setup. So if you didn't watch the video, or even if you did, David has a really, really cool room. You know, his whole thought was, man, how can I build the best performance that I possibly can, you know, to my ability with the budget that I have. And David, he said he spent less than $4,500 in his entire theater room. Now you may, may be saying, Michael, you know, that's a lot of money. It absolutely is. But when you look at the world of home theater, you can spend totally a whole lot more. You know, there are guys that are spending 4,500 bu bucks on just one amplifier for their entire system. And so when we walked in the room and uh, we met David and, or, you know, Tony knew him, but uh, when we walked in the room and checked out his home theater, I'm just looking around and going, dude, this is really cool. At first it looked really small to me, but that's because his ceilings are so low. I'm used to 10 foot ceilings. So his room, I think is about as big as mine, maybe a little bit narrower. I forget the exact dimensions, but he didn't have enough room for three, you know, three seats wide. And so what I thought was really cool as he shared in the video, he has two seats, and we'll talk about the hover boss in a minute, but he was, he was like, you know what, what if I have a third person? I don't have enough room to have a third seat. So he's like, man, I'll just pick up an inexpensive seat from Walmart, put it behind those seats, and then if I need, you know, I've got an extra guest, I can easily slide that around. I just thought that was so cool. Some other things I really loved about his setup is, you know, his screen, he used spandex. Now spandex is very inexpensive, but when we were watching it, man, it produces a really, really nice picture. Of course, it's not a, you know, a $2,000 screen, but it's like, okay, if you spend a hundred bucks on fabric versus 2000, are you really going to get whatever that is 20 times, you know, the performance value? Probably not. And so you just get a lot of bang for your buck when you're able to do DIY. Unfortunately, I don't do DIY because honestly, I'm just not handy. I can't build anything out of wood or, you know, in fabric, I'll make it look all janky and stuff and just, you know, it won't turn out nearly as nice as, as David was able to accomplish. Um, and so I typically, I just had to buy stuff, you know, or like in my case with this, you know, my cabinet, my wooden cabinet, I didn't build that. I had a friend build that. And so, um, so he's got this screen that he made himself. And I've always appreciated when guys had those types of abilities to do it themselves. Number one, it, it saves you a ton of money. But then number two, it's like you just get a lot of, um, not pride, but you get a lot of satisfaction knowing that I built this thing. I put this all together. I and mean, then my hat's off to you, Dave. You did a phenomenal job. I had never really heard DIY speakers before. Uh, I know a lot of guys that, that use them. I know my buddy Kyle Bliss from Life of Bliss, his channel, he has DIY and he loves that sound. Um, but I had never personally heard DIY, so I didn't know what to expect. And man, we started going through some music and going through some, some movies and I was like, dang, you know, they got the big horn and you guys know I like horn, uh, the sound from horns, the detail and the clarity. These had a really, really great sound and especially for the price, you know, that he was able to, uh, or that he put into building those. Again, you just got a really high value um, and performance, I guess, performance to value ratio, um, which is super, super cool. Um, in his room base, let's talk about that a second, because that was like one of the things I was really looking forward to. There's a lot of guys in my Facebook group that talk about, you know, man, you got to check out the Hover Boss and, 
I didn't even know what a hover boss was really. I kind of had an idea. I knew it was something about, you know, you've got woofers underneath your chairs on a platform. Um, legendary Brown Note, I think he has some in his setup. And um, there are other guys on our Daily Hi-Fi uh, podcast that have had it, had them in their setups and recommend it highly. And, and so we watched a couple of scenes that, um, <laughs> needless to say, they kind of blew me away, like almost literally. So, you know, the scene um, in Black Hawk Down, the Irene scene, and, uh, you know, I mean, there's a decent amount of bass in that, but it, it's not like crazy bass. Well, David, and, and the good thing, we didn't even have it like crazy loud, you know, so it was just a good volume, probably under reference or close to reference maybe, but I, at no time I felt like, oh man, this is just too loud for my personal preference. Um, but dude, when the bass kicked in on that scene, man, my chair lit up. I'll be honest with you. And think about this, it probably should, You've got four 12-inch drivers directly under your seat firing up and, and causing that platform to vibrate and shake. Um, that was an experience I wasn't really prepared for. I, I didn't know what to expect with the Hover Boss, honestly. Um, I've experienced some uh, bass shakers and Crosons and um, different things like that, and those are really, really awesome, very tactile feel. But man, this was, is, this was definitely different. Um, and of course, you'd need to, to put them side by side, but I don't know. I, I'm kind of thinking that the Hover Boss probably has more tactile bass than, you know, than what you can get maybe out of um, you know, some butt kickers. But again, I, I haven't compared those directly, but um, needless to say, the Hover Boss, I was pretty stinking impressive, or I was impressed with this performance. Definitely added a lot of tactile bass to the room, and you know, granted, he's got... Uh, three subs up front. He's got one in the rear. So those are, you know, putting out some pressure in the room as well. But, but I could tell the hover boss was really kicking in on that tactile feeling that I was getting throughout the whole stinging chair. Um, another demo that he played that was just ridiculous. It was crazy. Was the Hulk scene where they had the um, I forget what they call them, the sonic cannons, and they're pulsating. You know those the sound waves. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. I just like, I'm looking over at Tony going, are you believing this? It was pretty wild. Super, super fun. Just really, again, just added to that experience of the movie. Um, speaking of the Hover Boss too, I really like the fact that, that he wanted a way to be able to easily adjust that pressure. You know, I mean, think about it. If you have a bicycle and it has a, a tube in it or even a car, eventually you need to add air to it. And that's the same thing with the Hover Boss. David has three different tubes on each platform. Um, and so you've got a tube up front to help stabilize it, which that's really cool. It kind of helps stabilize that front end of the, of the platform because those four subwoofers are kind of more in the middle and then also kind of behind, like underneath the back of that platform. But he's got this one little tube and a valve that he can actually easily, you know, add air to it, take air out of it, measure it to make sure it's the right PSI. And I thought that was really, really cool. It's a great way. That way he doesn't have to, you know, uh, you know, kind of climb all the way underneath there. It's just easily accessible. Again, David, just great, great job in thinking that through and providing a, just a very easy way of maintaining that PSI on each platform. And speaking of each platform, the ones that I had seen, most people choose to do like one platform. So like in, in my room, I've got three theater seats. So in my brain, I wouldn't have thought to do three different platforms. I would have done one long platform. Well, I think it's actually kind of cool because he has two individual platforms. So if you're moving or if you get up, it, it doesn't bother the other person. It That one's stable on its own versus you know the movement that you might get if you had multiple people on the same platform so i thought that was cool um being really you know creative each one of us i've shared a video on my channel about how my theater room has issues you know there are things in my room even though it's a it's a dedicated theater room but granted i didn't build this this was a media room so it was just a room without a closet basically when we bought the home and I just, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna try to make this into a theater room kind of thing. I've got double sliding glass over here. That's not ideal. I had a window up here. That's not ideal. 
I've got a door back here that I can't really put a, a surround sound speaker where the door is, where it would be ideal. Um, so I have issues in my room. And what I appreciate about David is he had this, you know, uh, cabinet over on the left side of his room. And that's got, I think, had some electrical equipment in there. Um, and so he basically said, you know what, what do I do with that? And he's like, man, I got an idea. I'll put a speaker in one of those cabinets. I'll add insulation in there. Boom, man. And so he puts this in-wall speaker. Well, I, maybe it's, I don't know if it's an in-wall. I'm assuming it was. Uh, we didn't actually see the speaker inside of there. But I'm like, dude, that's just brilliant, man. So, you know, just taking what you have and doing the best with what you've got. Um, no matter what obstacles you have, um, just kind of figuring out, okay, what do I need to do to make a workaround it and just make the best of it. And so again, just absolutely brilliant. Another thing I really love that he did in this room is all of the um, uh, velvet that he put like right in front of the screen. That was super, super cool. Very inexpensive again. And dude, with the Velcro straps, are you kidding me? You know, he's got the, uh, um, the drop down ceiling, you know, you got those metal kind of cross bars. And he's like, hmm. What can I do there? You know, because you don't want to just paint them because then that's going to be reflective because it's metal. He's like, I know what I'll do. That's about the size of, of a Velcro strip, man. He puts it up there. Boom. It's completely black and just fit perfectly. So just all these little things that, that he did in his theater room to make it the very best that he could. Um, even the fact that he, um, you know, on his screen to be able to get behind it, it was pretty easy. Him and Tony just lifted it up set it out of the way. He's got easy access to it. Um, you know, it's a little difficult in there trying to store a massive screen like that, but we were able to slide it out of the way, get behind there. And it was kind of funny. He shared in the video, he climbs around there. He's like, oh, wow. He looks at his right speaker and that thing must've been just pumping like crazy because it had actually, uh, kind of walked over to the edge of the subwoofer. So it's probably a good idea that we found it before it fell off the ledge. Um, so he's going to try to figure out a way to, you know, put something underneath it so it doesn't kind of, kind of scoot. Now, David is just living proof that you don't have to spend a fortune to have a dedicated theater room. I remember when I was probably before I started even considering doing a theater room here in this home at that time, I actually thought that only rich people could have a dedicated theater room. Well, David, you're just living proof that you know, I mean, anybody can save up and work hard and sell some things and, and maybe take a little side, you know, do a little side hustle to earn some extra income to raise 4,500 bucks. And if you were able to do that, man, if you've got a little bit of time and you've got some, some knowledge in woodworking and things like that, and just some, some hands-on stuff, and you've got a little bit of tools, you can definitely build a kick butt system that really isn't going to break the bank. And so I really hope that that this video inspires you, even if you've got a small budget, maybe you can't afford those thousand dollar speakers or those, you know, the, the $3,000 uh, processor or something like that. David's system was very, very affordable. And so um, hopefully you found some little uh, nuggets or those little tips that would help you maybe even kind of do some creative things in your theater room, you know, with the Velcro or with the velvet to kind of um, kind of block some of those reflections. Um, or maybe the hover boss, maybe that intrigues you. Now I know we didn't, um, you know, talk about like how it's actually built. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there, AVS form, a lot of different resources that can help you if you just search for hover boss. And there's also a boss version um, as well. And so just depending on kind of what you're looking for, my understanding the hover boss will give you a little bit more tactile feel, uh, maybe even a lot. I'm not real sure because again, that's still kind of new for me, but it was just a really, really fun um, opportunity to experience his setup. Well, guys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I've got a lot of videos coming up. I'll be editing tonight and tomorrow and in the days to come, I'm making one video per day and then I'll do another, that'll go live at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each day. And then um, in the evening, I'll do a video like this, just kind of recapping what my experience was in that home theater. Well, if you missed any of the previous tours, I've got a link to them right over here. So be sure to check that out. And as always, you guys be blessed.
and we'll catch you in the next video.